Recently, an unusual paper came out showing that vaccinated people after a certain number of boosting can have this unusual antibody class switch. So what is that all about? This is what we're going to be talking about today. My name is Dr. Mikola Rashek in a slightly different spot than, than usual. Nevertheless, still doing lots of hiking, <laughs> lots of walking, and let's get uh, going. So this is the first paper, uh, as far as we understand, that actually determined to look at longitudinal effect of, um, of vaccination on what might be happening with the antibodies in vaccinated individuals. And what this paper showed that basically there is a class switch. So what happens is there's different number of types of antibodies. So you might have heard before discussing IgMs and IgAs, and the most common ones and the ones that we're most familiar with are the IgGs. Now the IgGs themselves, there's still four different types as well. Now, typically what happens is you start with a specific class. Normally the first one is IG3. And the reason why is because the gene that is responsible for production of these antibodies, and this class specifically refers to the stock of the antibody. So you know how the antibody has that Y shape? The stock, the, the bottom half of that Y would be the stock. And this is what we're, where the class which takes place. And we're going to be talking about that because that's actually important. So the gene that is responsible for coding these, it has number of these uh, um, genetic elements coding for these stocks. Those, uh, and they're referred to as gamma one, gamma two, three, and four. And the way they are organized is that the gamma three is first. This is then followed by gamma 1, gamma 2, and gamma 4. Now the B cells, which are normally responsible for producing antibodies, they can switch from the first one. Normally they employ the first one, which is gamma 3. Over time, they can switch to the, to the other classes. And that switch is dependent on, on it can be activated by these mutating enzymes called cystidine diamin diaminases cytidine diaminases sorry and uh, and basically these are enzymes that can mutate the genetic material and this is how antibodies can we can get this variety of antibodies because you can produce b cells that, that will have memory to make sure that they produce specific antibodies against viral proteins that were attacking us but these antibodies can be slightly mutated by these enzymes present in the side of cells to increase the variety of antibodies as well as to be able to respond to changing variants. Uh, the cytidine diaminases also are employed by inflammation and this is one of the ways we also fight pathogens as well by mutating their their genetic material and this is also one of the reasons why inflammation in general uh, can be dangerous because you don't want to have too much of it because the mutation can also happen inside your cells as well so this is one of one of many different reasons why inflammation in general is dangerous and if you can help it you want to avoid uh, inflammation as much as possible but when it's needed to help you fight something like a dangerous infection, this is where, where it can be useful, okay? So let's go back to, to this. What happens is that these mutagenic enzymes can lead to eventual switch from antibody class one, uh, one class to, to the other. This is referred to as class switch recombination. And uh, this is what was observed in this study with uh, approximately 30 healthcare workers who were vaccinated. And what was shown is that at the beginning of the vaccination, the, in the study, what the authors did, they, they collected um, blood samples 10 days post every vaccination that these um, healthcare workers did, which was uh, up to three different vaccinations, uh, different three different shots. So one, two, and then a booster, so three different shots. And then they also collected blood samples approximately around 200 days after each vaccination as well. The vaccinations 
regimen was between three to four weeks between the first shot and the second shot and between five to seven months um, after between the second shot and third shot. So that's kind of the history that was employed here. Now what was observed that at, the, at first when after the first shot basically there was no IgG antibodies and that's normal. This is basically the predominant antibodies were Ig1 and 3. There was a little bit of Ig2 class, IgG2 class and basically no IgG4 class and that's normal but what was observed that predominantly especially after um, some vaccines after the second shot started to demonstrate switch towards the IgG4 class and this increased uh, specifically increased a lot more after the third shot so we're and we're going to be talking about about what does that possibly could mean now what's uh, interesting though that if the vaccinees were also infected so if they had a breakthrough infection and they were infected by the natural virus then that compounded the effect and, and it enhanced the class switch towards IgG4 okay so that that was interesting because it showed that in just natural infection was compounding this and um, this is fairly unusual because we'll we'll get into this right away because normally this class which is not seen that's not a typical thing not even after natural infection uh, or after multiple vaccinations this normally does not occur so what does this mean just checking your mic is still on what does this mean um Clearly something different than normal is happening. They did not test the unvaccinated individuals. It would be interesting to see wh whether this has anything to do with the type of virus or whether this is specific to, to the vaccinees. But we don't know, but if we had to guess, typically this is not expected after in this type of class switch to take place um, after infection. Now what they did is they checked, they were looking at Pfizer mRNA vaccine, vaccinated individuals. So they did not look at the mRNA uh, from Moderna. And they, the authors even mentioned it would be interesting to see if this is also potentially can be observed also with, with the Moderna vaccines as well. And the reason why is because there could be spike protein differences uh, as well between these two vaccines. So is this, but they do think if this is specifically vaccine mRNA vaccine specific because they also looked at some participants who had only one shot of the mRNA vaccine and then one shot of non mRNA vaccine and they didn't show this type of behavior they basically there was no such a rapid or no such a large increase in the in the switch from the IgG3 and one to towards IgG2 and 4 class of antibodies. They studied this in another cohort. So the first cohort was about 30 individuals. They studied it in one more cohort of about 40 individuals. And same kind of uh, behavior was observed. Um, with the second cohort, they were able to, they actually provided us with a quantification number in terms of how much of a change is. And they mentioned there was about 40 fold increase in those IgG4 antibodies post third, third shot, okay? So then mm, here we go. Now, what does it mean? <laughs> well, the authors did not comment on that. They don't know whether, whether this, this uh, affects the capacity um, of uh, the disease, but they did mention that um, all of the individuals that they, they tested the fact that there was this increase in the IgG for antibodies, it did not seem to result in a more, um, more increased disease. Why do I mention this is because IgG for antibodies, they're actually still somewhat mysterious. They're, they're, we are only starting to learn more about this. So we still have to know exactly what they do, how they function, etc. And there, as a consequence, there's not too many studies uh, afforded to us to know what is going on. But there is earlier studies, uh, one that came from Brazil, for example, that showed that 
increased level of IgG for antibodies in COVID-19 patients correlated with more severe outcomes, okay? And those, another study showed that the ratios, the higher the ratio between IgG4 to IgG1 antibody, again, the worse outcomes uh, you get to see. But they, the authors of this particular study, they did not observe that in their own, in the results of, uh, in their own results with their own patients that they were analyzing. So um, what do we know about these IgG4 antibodies? Well, typically what they do is they, in, they increase tolerance towards an, towards an antigen. So, and as a consequence, you, what you do when you, when you use it, when you, when you use these antibodies, IgG4 antibodies, is when you want to clear something out of the system but without necessarily causing the, the inflammation associated with clearing uh, a pathogen. So a good example of when you see this type of tolerance is, is beekeepers, when they actually want to clear the antigen, well, that would be like the bee venom, but, but without having the constant uh, activation of the inflammatory pathway pathways because what happens normally like why do we need antibodies obviously they will bind to the pathogen on, and let's say if it's a virus it will help to block the virus from being able to to then subsequently infect uh, individuals right um, but then there's other things that happen to it it's not just that you want the antibodies to bind the virus then what what you can do is you can clear the the virus that is coded by antibodies so not only do you want these antibodies to prevent the virus from infecting cells that's obviously neutralization but then you also want to get rid of this this virus and there's multiple immune immune events that happen um that help to clear it so um the one of them is phago phagocytosis uh, so uh, that's mediated by specific immune cells so they now what they do is they recognize the stock and that uh, of the antibody so remember if the antibody has a y shape the tips of the y will bind say something like the spike protein but it's the stock that is then recognized by the immune cells and they can then in incorporate that and then destroy it so then there's this is referred to as antibody dependent phagocytosis then there's also antibody dependent uh, cellular uh, um, cytotoxicity so basically that's where you destroy the entire complex but these events are inflammatory so they provoke inflammatory response and they can also be the destructive to the tissue so this is so what so normally you want to have this happen to help to clear the virus, right? To help to clear it. And this is why you can have switch to something like IgG4 class because the stocks of the IgG4 antibodies, they are not recognized by immune cells the same way that, uh, that the stocks of other classes of antibodies are recognized. So um, as a consequence, these immune cells have receptors they're called FC gamma receptors. They recognize specific component of that stock. IgG4 antibodies, they no longer typically are recognized by those receptors on the immune cells. So that means if you are switching to these, to these antibodies, these antibodies and whatever the binding will not be will not be recognized by cells and will not be cleared by the cells. So what does that mean? We don't know what that means in the context of the spike protein, but normally what we are learning with the IgG4 um, antibodies is that it has emerged that they also are involved in a number of uh, diseases. So they are involved in autoimmune diseases as well as um, what is referred to as related uh, um basically IgG4 related diseases. And it with the IgG4 related diseases, this is where you have very high increases in these, in these antibodies in the circulation. And um, what happens there's a, in such diseases, there's a multi-organ uh, uh, tissue damage and these tissues are infiltrated by, by white blood cells as well as those uh, um, B cells that produce th those antibody that, those type of antibodies, and, and but we don't know exactly what kind of antigens these um, these antibodies are, are recognizing. They're not they don't look 
they don't seem to be recognizing very specific antigens. Now with the autoimmune diseases, you don't see these spikes or increases in, in IgG4 antibodies, but, but <clears throat> they definitely seem to be targeting specific antigens. And what happens is they prevent other, other antibodies from doing their proper function. So basically IgG4 antibodies can compete. They can compete for binding and prevent other antibodies uh, from doing their job and that in itself can result in autoimmune disease so this is this is we don't know yet what it means to have this this switch towards igg4 um, antibodies in vaccinated individuals but it could be problematic if it leads to tolerance you might not want to have a tolerance towards something like spike protein. And the reason why is because there's clearly slowly emerging evidence that spike protein could be very damaging to the circulation. Okay, so then I'll be talking about that um, in the future videos as well. Um, and uh, so tolerance towards spike protein might not necessarily be a good, good thing. And the authors were able to show that, that this increase with uh, towards the IgG4 antibodies is definitely mediated by also an increase in memory B cells inside those vaccinated individuals that specifically produce those IgG4 antibodies. They were able to demonstrate that and they were also, they've confirmed it with sequencing and they also confirmed that as a consequence, these IgG4 antibodies no longer can, in, in their test, they were no longer being uptaken by cells that are normally would, would uptake um, antibody complex uh, complexes uh, for phagocytosis or complement deposition. They did a really interesting experiments where they took microbeads, uh, microbeads that were coated with spike protein uh, and these were fluorescent and they were able to actually show that uh, when you code these with then out those spike proteins with antibodies um, with the IgG3 and IgG1 there was still everything was going happening okay and so then the cells were able to phagocytose these antibody and spike protein complexes but when they used IgG2 or IgG3 that th those antibody dependent cellular events were we were decreased so clearly that means is that if we have this switch towards IgG for antibodies it will result in reduced clearance of the pathogen uh, inside inside our body. So that's what that means, obviously, uh, tolerance. So, but these are important events, these, uh, un, um, these antibody dependent um, effector cellular events are, as they're, as they're called, they are important for clearing the disease, right? So what the authors suggest that perhaps there's still these IgG4 antibodies still could be neutralizing the antibody and indeed all of the vaccinated individuals they studied after the third booster the neutralization still increased of their antibodies towards the virus but but the cellular events that clear the antibody virus complex will reduce so is that enough Time will tell, we'll need more studies. As I mentioned, this is the first of its kind. And this might be the reason why this has never been seen before, where you actually study this for a long period of time as to what's happening with, with the antibody class switch. And the reason why is because this might not have been expected at all. Because, um, because uh, as I mentioned, that's not a, not a typical, uh, typical event uh, after either infection or vaccination. So time will tell what it means. Um, but uh, we need to be vigilant on this because th we could be potentially seeing an increase towards uh, um, events that are either tolerogenic or autoimmune and that might not be a good thing with regards to the, something as dangerous as spike protein. So okay, that's all I have uh, for you today on this topic. Um, thanks once again for everyone for supporting the channel and and uh, thank you everyone for uh, sharing the videos. Thank you for leaving your questions. We still have the ongoing COVID Q and A, so I look forward to seeing some of you there. And if you want free tickets to to that, uh, please subscribe to our newsletter. And everything is in the description below. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye everyone.